My dog is one of my prized possessions. I just think he's a very cute, good boy. And uh, the idea of someone stealing him makes me very angry. So when I saw someone send into me a story time where someone tried to steal their dog, I knew I had to share it with y'all. And it's absolutely batty. Thought y'all would enjoy it. I've got a lot of other stories too. It's gonna be a long one. So grab the popcorn, hit the like button, and uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. <laughs> Nice rack and her ass Brazilian just turned 21, but my bank's a million. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrubby here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And uh, like I said in the intro, we're gonna open up with a dog getting stolen. Here is yesterday's comment of the day. Thank you so much. And with that out of the way, don't steal people's dogs. I didn't know I had to come out here and make it a disclaimer, but I definitely do, apparently. So the person that sent this in to me had just adopted a rescue dog from the pound and it was still young, not like fully grown yet, but not like a little tiny cute baby puppy. It was still a cute baby puppy, but you get what I'm saying. There's like a tiny little tiny baby puppy and then a puppy. And they had a puppy and it was very cute and a lot of people in the apartment complex had gotten very envious, but there was this particular lady who had gotten a little bit obsessed with this subscriber's dog and had started asking when they were going to take it on walks so she could come see it, and, you know, if she could have some time walking it alone. Just weird questions. You're not allowed to walk someone's dog alone if you don't know them. That's super weird. Like, if the guy who lives five doors down that I don't know at all started asking to walk my dog, I'd be very confused as to why he's doing that. Anyways, one day the subscribers at work and they come home to their front door kicked in like somebody had taken the boot to it kicked off the front doors lock right in and had uh, taken the dog. So they call the police and report it and obviously the police come out and they're investigating what had happened to this apartment because it's a pretty serious break in the front door lock is broken like they kicked in the door. And as the police are there doing their little reporting thing, his neighbor lady that had been obsessed with his dog walks up to him and says, Oh my goodness, what happened? What did they take? Your dog? Which is a super weird thing to say if you don't know what they took. I feel like robbers aren't huge on taking dogs. So the fact that she walked up and immediately said, what did they take, your dog, made his eyebrows start to go up a little bit. But whatever, the police say they're going to look into it and they'll be on the lookout for the dog, but no promises because it's hard to recover stolen property, which sucks to hear, but whatever, I don't know. So he goes about his day and the next day he stays home from work because he's very distraught about his dog being stolen. I think anyone would be upset about that. That doesn't strike me as something that happens to you when you wake up the next morning. Oh well, these things happen. You know, you can always get another dog. It is what it is. Like, I hope that's not people's reaction to this stuff. So he goes and he's taking a walk and he sees the neighbor that's obsessed with his dog is walking a dog and she didn't have one. So that's weird. And what's even weirder is it looks like his dog. So he starts to get closer and the dog that looks like his dog starts freaking out trying to pull to him very excitedly as if a uh, dog that had missed its owner. And he realizes that's my dog. So he goes over there and she's just pretending not to see him which is not a great way to get out of a confrontation. If I just pretend they don't exist and throw my head in the sand like an ostrich, none of it actually exists. Especially when you're stealing someone's dog, just ignoring them doesn't exist. Especially when the dog's trying to get to them because it misses their owner. So he starts confronting her being like, why did you take my dog? Let go of my dog. Let go of my dog. And he goes up and unclips the dog from the harness. And the lady looks and sees that the dog has been unclipped from the harness, looks back at him, looks back at the dog, looks back at him, does a triple take and says, whatever, you can have it and just walks away. Probably because she realized if she tried to put up a fight or like claim that she had bought it from somebody, the guy was just going to report her and she would have been screwed. How did you come into possession of the dog? Oh, I don't know. The guy was very excited to have his dog back, so he immediately takes the dog home. It was okay. It didn't look like it was mistreated or like uh, treated poorly in any way. But he calls up the police department and lets them know that his neighbor had taken the dog. And instead of coming to investigate, they're like, great, you got your dog back. I don't know where this guy lives, but wherever it is, I'm not trying to live there. Because that seems like a weird reaction. Oh, that break in that happened? You figured out who did it? Great. Glad you got your dog back. 
I mean, I guess they couldn't confirm she had done it, but the fact that this little old lady had become so obsessed with this dude's dog, she was willing to go kick in the door like an FBI response team. Goodness gracious, bro. Like, dog napping is nuts. I don't even know why you would want someone else's dog. The idea of ripping a dog away from its owner and then trying to make it love me just sounds like something only an anime villain would do. For real, for real. So the guy gets his dog back, and ever since, his neighbor has just been avoiding him and acting like he's the bad guy. Trying to convince people in the complex that he did a bunch of stuff and that's why she's avoiding him. And he's like, no, I didn't do anything. She stole my dog. And everyone in the complex is kind of on his side because it's not the first time she's had some sticky fingers. A bunch of people started telling him stories about how she's apparently notorious for stealing things from people. So uh, guard your dogs, apparently. Apartment complex, a house, you never know. Things are getting crazy in the year 2022. I just don't know why you would steal a dog. This lady deserves to be in a not nice place. Okay, this next one is just some bad parenting. Gen Z taking an enormous L. It seems like Gen Z just can't take a W. I'm a part of Gen Z, by the way. A lot of people got confused. Yes, I'm old Gen Z, a little bit of a boomer Gen Z, but I technically count. This guy had a little brother who was, like, insanely addicted to Xbox. I think everybody goes through that phase. At least I did. I, I don't know if it's common. I Like, some boomers are probably listening to this, real boomers. I never played Xbox back in my day. Yeah, you were a kid in the 40s, dude. You were more worried about getting drafted for World War II than you were about a Modern Warfare 2 lobby. We get it. We appreciate everything you guys did, you know, but uh, times have changed. Anyways, this guy's little brother was a little bit too addicted to Xbox to the point where he would get really, really mad at video games. And I get raging. I'm not trying to say I've never gotten mad before. But if you ever start, like, actually crying, shaking of anger at a video game, it's time to just take a little bit of a break, go outside. What's that message that Nintendo Switch gives you if you're on it for, like, too long straight? Oh, go outside, take a break, you can do it. That's what kind of needs to happen, and that's how mad his brother would get. And so one day, everyone's having a normal night. It's like a school night, whatever, and his brother's playing Fortnite in the next room. And he's getting pretty loud, he's getting excited, but whatever. He's not going to tell him to shut up or stop making noise, because even back in the day when Fortnite was popping, if you're top three and you're trying to give call-outs, you're going to get hype, you're going to get a little loud, and it is what it is. So he's listening to his brother, and his brother starts, like, frantically making call-outs as if they're in a fight and they're not doing too hot. And listen, Fortnite is fun. I'm not trying to say Fortnite's not fun. I'm not trying to say that Fortnite is as fun as it was in 2018, though. So he didn't know why his brother was taking it so seriously and getting so upset, but it becomes clear that his team loses this little engagement because he starts screaming about how his team was trash and if they just did their jobs, then they wouldn't be in this situation every time they tried to do something in the game. And he couldn't believe he had to deal with teammates that were this brain dead, blah, blah, blah. Not very nice things. And then he hears things start getting thrown. He hears things being broken. And instead of just ending at things being thrown and things being broken, he hears what is like a bowl in a china shop, almost like someone took a mini wrecking ball like Miley Cyrus and started throwing it around the room. Whatever is going on in there, it sounds like not much is surviving. So he goes out into the hallway and his dad is coming up the stairs to go investigate because it's made such a racket that even he's like, what is going on? And they open the door in what used to be a really cool room with this, like, desk that was on the wall, set up all nice, very, very well attached to the wall, sick looking, is now just the ruins of it. It's pulled off the wall. The entire desk has been pulled off the wall. The drywalls come off with it. The other walls just have holes in the drywall everywhere. Almost like he took his fist and just went every four inches and kept punching. And his brother is standing there still screaming about how it's so bullcrap that his team wouldn't do what they had to do. And his dad is looking at this situation. And imagine being in his shoes. Like, this guy didn't grow up with video games. And even if you did grow up with video games, this is nuts. You trashed a room. 
but you pay for this house. You're making the payment every month for this house. You open the door. Your kid has trashed everything, all the nice stuff you've given him because he came in second place in the Fortnite game. So his dad starts yelling at him like, why would you do this? But his little brother turns to his dad and tells him to shut up because he won't understand, which was not a good idea. So his dad walks over, takes his Xbox, and just walks out of the room. He doesn't break it or anything, just takes it away. And his brother, the next day, goes to school and comes back to just his mattress on the floor and his parents explaining that he was going to be sleeping with just his mattress on the floor till he learned to respect things. No more Xbox, no more computer, no more staying up late playing Fortnite. And his brother was pissed and was talking about how it was so unfair. And I don't know if this is, like, really mean of me, but what do you expect, dude? You trash your entire room, and not just trash it. We're not talking about, like, yelling, punching a monitor. We're talking about knocking holes in the wall, serious repairs having to be made to your room, and you expect your parents to do absolutely nothing about it and keep letting you play Xbox like you were before? If you can play video games and get good grades and, like, have no problem and have a job, good for you. Then keep on gaming. But the second you start, I don't know, destroying your house, being unable to function because of it, it's probably time to take a step back and stop doing what you're doing. I just thought that was nuts, though, especially in the year 2022. It would be nuts any year, but the fact he's still going this crazy for Fortnite this year goes to show he's way out of touch, too. You're not gonna go pro, buddy. I don't even think people are really playing Fortnite these days, other than the pro players and the people that enjoy the no-builds. So this next story that was sent in to me is from a guy that's in college. So he's staying in some apartments that, like, aren't the best quality. They're super near his campus, but his campus is old. So the apartments are old, which means he can basically hear his neighbors living their day-to-day -day life. Some guy gets in an argument with his wife. He gets a play-by-play. -play. Might as well be sitting live in, like, an episode of Dr. Phil or Maury, the way that this guy's just dealing with having to listen to these people live these dramatic lives. And the guy above him was just a party animal, almost like he didn't do anything but party. That was his only job, his only reason to exist. He didn't know what the guy actually did, but every night on the dot from like 8 p.m. to midnight, he would be insanely loud. And on weekends, it would be insanely loud till like 3, 4 a.m., this guy's trying to study, get ready for school and whatnot, and it's just too hard to, like, actually do anything with this person living above him. And any time he would go up to try to ask him to turn it down, no one would answer the door, even if there was very obviously a party going on on the other side. But whatever, one weekend he comes home on a Friday and sees this flyer in his door, and it's the apartment above him passing out flyers saying that it was their birthday and they were throwing a super large party and everyone was invited and everyone should bring everyone that they could. And this just meant one thing to this guy was that his night was going to be absolutely miserable. And it just so happened that that weekend was a long weekend, so he starts calling up all of his friends trying to find something else to do so he doesn't have to be home that night. But like 99% of the school had gone back home for the weekend, so he was one of the only people left in town, so he's just kind of stuck with it. And sure enough, at 7 p.m., the music starts and the crowd just gets bigger and bigger, but eventually the crowd would stop normally. Like, that's how parties normally go. You hit terminal velocity, it can't get any bigger, no one else fits in the apartment, but that doesn't happen. People just keep coming, they keep cramming more people in. And it gets to the point that, like, people are jumping to the music and he's seeing his floor kind of going up and down. So he goes outside and goes upstairs to complain. And this time he's not going to be turned away. Like, this isn't safe, obviously. If the floor is buckling, you can't keep dancing there. And he goes up there and people are, like, on the railing of the balcony to the apartment complex, out the door. And he looks into the apartment and it's like a sardine can. People are shoulder to shoulder. It looks like if you uh, farted in there, no one would be able to escape if it smelled rancid. Would be a fantastic place for somebody to try a stink bomb. Like, no one can escape. Deal with the stench. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Either way, he walks in and starts being like, yo, where is the owner? Where is the owner? And the guy says, it's me. And he says, you got to get some people out of there because the floor in the apartment beneath you is starting to buckle. Like it's going to break. And the guy starts going on about how there's no way that could happen. That could never happen. Quit being ridiculous. 
Just enjoy the party. Why was he being such a buzzkill? And as they're having this discussion outside the apartment on this railing, the living room in the apartment where everyone was dancing and jumping goes down. And it just goes... And there's a bunch of screaming. Everyone's going crazy. Ah, the world's gonna end. We're all gonna die. The floor collapsed. And the guy looks back at him and says, well, I guess I should have got some people out of there, huh? My bad. As if that's all it's going to be, bro. You just collapse the floor onto this other dude's living room and you think saying, oops, my bad is going to cover it. And he says, like, I'm going to contact the landlord. And he starts trying to convince him that he shouldn't contact the landlord and he wouldn't be being a cool neighbor if he did that. Yeah, you know what else isn't cool? Throwing a party so big that the floor literally collapses. What if he would have still been on his couch when like 40 people plummeted through the floor? I don't know, man. He might have been leaving in something other than a stretcher, more like a hearse. Like, that that can't be good for you. So he says, look, I've got no choice, plus we need to get this fixed. I can't live there if I don't have a roof above me and you don't have a floor. Like, how is that going to work? So he calls the landlord and tells him, and the landlord finds out and is immediately super apologetic and starts explaining that this guy has had problems before and that he was going to be evicted. So he gives the guy the eviction notice, The guy's pissed, starts blaming the subscriber, saying all of this was his fault. And how was he supposed to know that this had been an issue before and you were going to get evicted? And on top of that, you broke his roof, bro. What did you want him to do when you plummeted 30 people into his living room? You gave him no choice but to make it his business and report you. People are just nuts, man. All right, so this is just a story that's like not long enough for its own video, but I've wanted to tell on the channel, so I hope you guys like it. A while ago, I was in the lunchroom back in middle school, and this was a little bit more organized than high school. It was just more out of control. It's a little bit harder to control people that are going to be adults in like one or two years. But back in middle school, there was one person who would get up on this little stage thing and give announcements, and it was usually like a teacher's pet, goody two-shoes type of person. If you like to follow the rules, good for you, but if you're annoying and, like, love snitching on people and act like Randall from Recess, you're not very swag. But whatever, the person would get up there and give the speech, and it just so happened to be this guy that had snitched on a ton of people, so he was not very popular with the school. And one day, I walk in, and my table was here, but it was connected to another table, and the kid who sat at the table connected to us was in trouble a lot of the time, and he says, I'm gonna throw a tomato at that guy. And I was like, what do you mean you're gonna throw a tomato at that guy? And in my mind, I'm envisioning that thing from medieval times where they would put that dude in, like, the the wooden holder thing in the middle of town and people could throw things at him. And he opens his backpack, and sure enough, he has two tomatoes, and he's like, that guy snitched on me and got me suspended, so I'm gonna throw a tomato at him. And I'm like, all right, well, uh, yeah, go for it. And I know, I know, the right thing to do would have been to stop him, but I'll be honest, I wanted to see what would happen if he threw a tomato at him, and he had also snitched on me and gotten me in trouble, so I wasn't exactly like, oh no, don't throw the tomato at the guy, that would be very sad. No, throw it at him. Splatter it on his face. I I don't really care. I think that would be hilarious. So my friends show up to lunch and I don't really tell them because they have big mouths. I don't want it to like be loudly announced and then everyone become aware of it. So I'm just sitting there watching and sure enough, about halfway through lunch, he gets up, walks over about 15 feet away from the guy as he's announcing what's coming up with the school. The dance is going to be on this day, on this da-da-da-da-da. And as he's in the middle of the speech, this tomato, which has been sitting in his backpack for a bit, so it's gotten a little bit soggy, it's not like a firm tomato, it's squishy, smacks into his forehead and splatters. It had gotten to that perfect consistency of just being held together by the skin, not much else, like there wasn't much substance. So as this tomato splats into his head, and it splats, it just goes everywhere, and he makes like a big ew noise into the microphone and immediately grabs it and says, whoever did that, you're going to be in big trouble. But as soon as the tomato hit him, a bunch of people have stood up and like started freaking out and laughing and pointing and, you know, trying to make a scene. So the guy who threw the tomato just comes back and sits down and starts acting the most normal I've ever seen him. Usually this kid was in trouble, he was loud, he was rambunctious. 
This man came back to the table, took the napkin in the shirt, started using a fork and knife, please and thank you. Ah, what is this chicken sandwich that I have here? Medium rare? Like, you would have thought this guy was seriously a whole new person the way he put on the act as if he was some angel. And believe it or not, he ended up getting away with it, dude. He literally splatted this guy he had beef with, with a tomato, in the middle of the lunchroom as he was giving an announcement, and they couldn't figure out who did it. They went back and reviewed the security camera footage, and I don't know how it is that every phone is 1080p, but security cameras have this problem, but it was like 144p. So all it was was a kid in a hoodie. There's a lot of kids in a hoodie in a middle school, so good luck figuring it out. And because everyone had jumped up, it had just gotten even more confusing, so he straight up got away with it. And to make it even funnier, the guy who, like, did announcements had a little plexiglass screen put in, as if he was a politician giving a dangerous speech. Just to make sure if anyone else got wild ideas, they couldn't pelt him with a tomato. If you're so bad at making announcements that the school is, like, plotting to hit you with tomatoes, you might just want to give it up. Is it really that worth it? I is it? Wow, you announced that on the 15th of this month we'll be having a dance, and all you got for it was being hit in the face with a tomato. Doesn't seem like an even trade-off. And if you're going to get a privilege like that, at least do it by being really nice and cool and not snitching on people until the principal just finds you useful enough that they have to give you something you want. If you're selling out enough of your classmates that you're able to blackmail the teachers into giving you a position, you're snitching on your classmates way too much, let's be honest. So this one is just like a harmless prank that ended up going wrong, but it, it's still pretty funny. So the person who sent this in to me has gotten a little bit older, but when they were in high school, it was right around the time that every class got projectors, and it was a pretty big deal. And they had this teacher that they weren't too fond of because they took joy in, like, embarrassing kids that didn't too know too much about what was going on, excuse me. But, like, if you got an answer wrong, they would relish in being able to make you look stupid in front of the class, which is the worst type of teacher. If you want people to enjoy your class... Help them enjoy it. Don't embarrass them when they're wrong. It's just going to make them slowly hate your subject more and more. But whatever, I digress. He decided to steal this teacher's projector remote just to mess with them a little bit because he thought it was funny. And it is pretty funny. And under most circumstances, the teacher would probably just order a new remote and it would harmlessly pass because it's not that big of a deal. But of course, the second that this teacher realized that their remote was missing, they started freaking out. They demanded that every student empty their pockets in front of them so they could double check that nobody had taken it. And at this point, the person who took it didn't want to, like, take it forever. They were just going to take it for a class. But they had to hide it and get away with it because the teacher made it very clear that whoever had taken it was going to get expelled for trying to steal school property. So they get it through the pocket check, and they have to just take it with them. And that's not their plan. It is not their goal to go ahead and take this for the entirety of their life. They were going to give it back, but their teacher really put them in a hard place where this harmless prank got forced to turn into them stealing it. So they go home, and they just get rid of the remote. They didn't know what to do with it. They panicked. Yes, they probably could have just gone in and slipped it in. That's probably what they should have done. Hindsight is 2020, but they were panicked. They didn't want to get in trouble, so they just get rid of the remote. So the next day, he goes into class, and the teacher starts telling them that because of whatever unthoughtful, inhumane student stole the remote, they were going to be half to getting a, uh, have to be getting. I don't know what happened there. My words got flipped, turned upside down like a Fresh Prince of Bel-Air intro song. They were going to have to get a new projector, and they didn't really get it because they thought the same thing I did, which is you can't just buy a remote. I'm sure the projector company absolutely loves that. Oh, you lost the tiny little projector moat? Yep, you just gotta give us the entirety of whatever a projector costs. I don't even know what they cost now, but back then they weren't cheap. It was relatively new technology. And the school started a school-wide investigation to try to find out who had taken it. And he didn't tell anyone he was going to take it because he just didn't feel like it was a good idea to get that spreading around, which was probably for the best because they even ended up putting out a reward for whoever could give them information. 
But sure enough, one day he comes into class and they had a new projector. So the principal had gone out and like bought a brand new projector for this teacher. Makes you wonder what kind of dirt the principal must have had or had uh, from the teacher. I'm just saying, I feel like at my school, we literally had to ask our parents for money because they didn't have money for paper for the printers. My school didn't have money for paper, guys. Paper, that's kind of something you need to do the school. Either way, it was just a weird situation where the teacher ended up getting their new projector, but for the rest of the year said that if they found out anything about who had done it, they would immediately be reporting them to the principal and they would be being prosecuted to the full extent of the law. So the person just kept it close to their vest and didn't tell anyone until they emailed it to me, which is hilarious because they're like 33 now. So, to whoever this was, power to you. Congratulations on keeping your secret. I don't think they're gonna find you. Could you imagine if this is how it all goes down? Like, he gets a letter in the mail from the school district saying that they heard this story and they know who he is. And if he doesn't cough up the money for what the projector cost, plus interest, he's going to be arrested. And because of the interest, it's like $800,000 now, you know? He owes over a million dollars. It, it With the interest, it's like $1.8 million. The projector was 800000 and it was originally purchased because it was such new technology. We all know school districts don't have that kind of money. You can't fool us. All right, guys, we're like halfway through the video, and if you've been enjoying it so far, you should go down there and press the like button. And if you don't press the like button, then no joke, no scam, I will be forced to make my very large pet alligator eat you. Yeah, that's right. I uh, found him in Florida. He was just kind of walking around the street, super hungry. So press the like button and let's get back to the video. So sticking with the themes of apartments from earlier, this guy moved into this apartment complex and happened to be the youngest person who lived there by at least like 30 years. It was just a much older complex, which was fine. They weren't giving him any issue, but they had a lot of time on their hands to worry about things. When you're retired and you're not going to work and coming home exhausted, certain things mean more to you. And they took their, like, front flower displays on their porches very seriously. All the old ladies would, like, walk around and chat with each other on their porches. And they were always changing it up. They had to have a consistent theme, you know? They had, like, the Halloween setup, the Thanksgiving setup. The two ladies who lived closest to him, though, really did not like each other because of this display thing that they would do. One lady felt like the other lady was copying her. And because of that, was insanely mean to her. Would, like, constantly insult her whenever they were within earshot or eyeshot of each other. Going above and beyond to make sure that everybody knew that she was a copycat and sucked. Anyways, Christmas was coming up and he comes home one day and sees that they both have pretty similar displays. Which is not a bad thing. It's Christmas. There's really only so much you're going to be able to do. They both had a Christmas tree. They both had a little nativity scene. I don't know. Like, there's, there's only so much stereotypical Christmas decorations that you can put out. I'm sure if you went through the whole apartment complex, most people would have had some things in common. But whatever. He knows it's going to be some drama, so he just goes inside, sits on the couch, and starts playing video games, hoping that they don't make him intervene for some reason. Usually it just got too loud and argumentative that it was going to interrupt the entire complex, so he would go out and try to calm it down, but he's just trying to play video games and he hears it. You bad female dog, you copied my entire scene, what's wrong with you, you're always copying me. I didn't copy you, you copied me, you always copy me and then tell everyone that I copied you. See, they're both just accusing each other of some crazy things, there's levels to this, it's old lady beef, you know? So they're arguing, and he's like, I don't want to get involved. I'm just going to let them argue it out. They can figure it out. They're, they're big girls. They're 65. They can handle it. So he goes back to playing video games, but the argument just keeps getting more and more intense. And then it stops, and it just kind of sounds like they're both making animal noises at each other. Kind of like, rah, rah, rah. So he goes and looks out the window, and on the porch across from him... These two old ladies are, like, slapping each other, trying to fight. It doesn't really look like a fight, because they're both old, neither one of them is throwing punches, but if they could have thrown punches, they would have thrown punches, and they're very angrily slapping each other. 
And so at that point, he's like, all right, I got to intervene. What am I supposed to do? I can't let these old ladies literally come out and have a Hunger Game fight over some stupid displays. So he goes out there and breaks them up, and they both start trying to blame the fight on the other ones, saying that, like, the other person copied them. And the subscriber had just had enough of this, so he tells both of them that he doesn't really care who started it, he doesn't really care who copied who, but fighting over the decorations you have on your porch is insanely stupid. And then they start uniting on him, bro. They're like, well, it's not stupid to us. How dare you think it's stupid? Why are you trying to talk down to us? I don't know, maybe because you just made him come out and break up a fight because you guys can't get along for the 15 minutes it takes to walk past each other every day multiple times. I don't know how often they're seeing each other, okay? It's like retirement village. Who knows how often they have to interact, but I feel like you don't have to slap and fight each other over some decorations. Especially because he was like, it was not a carbon copy. He, he would have told me if one of them had just carbon copied the other. That wasn't what happened. They just happened to have some things in common because guess what? There's certain things that everyone just associates with the holiday. Imagine you're decorating for Halloween and you look across the street and your neighbor has a skeleton. You go over there, you're like, oh, trying to encroach on my turf, huh? Skeletons are my thing. And he's like, dude, uh, skeletons are just a Halloween thing. Yeah, likely story. Nobody was using uh, uh, skeletons to decorate for Halloween until I started doing it. Everyone in this neighborhood just wants to be just like me. Goodness gracious, bro. Um, sometimes you just gotta take stuff too seriously. When you have nothing else going on, I feel like it's just a human desire to constantly have something to be, like, worried about for some reason. These people made it to retirement. Just go enjoy it. It's not like there's a ton of time left. I'm sorry, it's the reality. Why are you spending your time worrying about what your neighbor used to decorate their porch? Who really cares? None of this matters. Literally none of this matters. Especially to the point of throwing hands over it. You're lucky nobody got hurt. Two old ladies fighting, one of you falls down, breaks your hip. That's a fat lawsuit. So this next one is pure stupidity. I really would not recommend doing this. So this person works as a cashier at a gas station and they're usually pretty paranoid, especially the last year or so. Things have just gotten crazier. They haven't been robbed. They don't want to be robbed. That's a very normal human reaction, I would say. One day though, he's working and this guy comes in and immediately goes to like the back of the store and pulls something out of his jacket. And he just gets a very bad feeling. He doesn't know what it is, but he just, like, the way he's acting, the way he's looking at him gets a weird vibe. And the guy walks up, and he's got a paper bag, and he has his hand in the bag, and he looks at him, and he says, give me the money. And immediately, this kid is just shaking, like, oh, crap, here it is. I knew this was going to happen eventually. And he says, okay, yeah, sure, I'll give it to you. Just please don't hurt me. Like, I'll give you whatever you want. And the guy looks at him weird and says, dude, why are you so scared? And he's like, well, you're robbing me. Like, I'll give you whatever you want. Just please don't hurt me. And the guy pulls his hand out of the paper bag and is gripping onto a banana and says, no, man, it was just a prank. I'm messing with you. I'm not actually robbing you. And the person who sent this in to me is, of course, pissed and is like, dude, get out of the store. What's wrong with you? That's not funny. And the guy with the banana in his hand is like, why are you so upset about it? I don't understand. It's just a harmless prank. And maybe I'm stupid. I don't understand how this is a harmless prank. I don't even understand how this is funny. You're telling me that your entire idea of a prank is to go up to some person getting paid minimum wage who's in a situation where they are already thinking that being robbed is a possibility. You know, unfortunately, I feel like if you work at a gas station, you just know that it could happen. You're going to walk in and make them think that you're going to rob them. And then when they get scared, act confused about it and be like, no, it's a banana. I just don't think it's very funny. I, I don't get it at all. And I think a good prank is great. This reminds me of 2015 YouTube when they would just go up to people. Oh, I'm going to go up and take their wallet as a social experiment and then be shocked when people would beat the crap out of them. Yeah, that's what happens when you take people's wallets. So they're arguing back and forth and he keeps telling the guy like, get out, get out of here, dude. You can't stay here. Like, I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. And they're arguing back and forth and another customer that was in the store comes up and starts telling the guy to get out and it's not funny and he's lucky he didn't get hurt. 
And that's the other thing this guy's not thinking about, bro. Like, sure, it's really messed up to scare some poor minimum wage worker. But in 2022, you walk up to some guy with your hand in a bag and say, give me the money. There's not a 100% chance that you're leaving the store either. It's just such a stupid prank. There are so many things that could go wrong. And even if it quote unquote goes right, it's just not funny. How did you expect them to react? Aw oh, man, that was really awesome. You got me. I thought my life was in danger. And it was not. What a great prank. You sure are a cool dude. Maybe we could hang out sometime. I'm assuming this guy doesn't get invited to parties a lot, and if you're watching this, this is why. Because every time you go to the party, you start pretending to rob everyone and then act surprised when you get beat up for it. I don't know, bro. For anyone out there in a job like this, I don't know if people are this stupid often. I've never worked as a cashier. I just worked at a grocery store for a bit. But goodness gracious, this would have my anxiety on 11. If anything, I would be more paranoid after I got pranked about it. Because if someone is dumb enough to joke about it, then someone's definitely stupid enough to do it. Wherever banana prank guy is, you're a moron. Uh, don't recommend. Leave the poor minimum wage workers alone. This one is just some next level smart laziness while also kind of being funny because the person he got one over on was bragging about how impossible it would be to cheat in their class. This guy goes to school in like... The first day, he's getting the names called off, and the teacher stops on his name and asks him condescendingly if he has an older brother by this name. And he says yes, and the teacher is like, Oh, yes, your brother was a good writer, but his behavior was, eh. Like, just straight up first day of school, rude off rip. And that same first day, she proceeds to tell everyone in this class that she grades essays insanely hard and they should be afraid of having to write in her class because she was notorious for being ridiculously hard on writing. She's made students cry, she's made students want to drop out of school, and she's saying all this with a smile. I don't know, I feel like if I was a teacher and the uh, feedback I got at the end of the year on my class was... You made me cry and I want to never go to school again because of you. I wouldn't think that was a flex. I'd be a little bit embarrassed. But she was wearing it like a badge of honor. And she says there's literally no way to plagiarize. You will get caught. She remembers everything she's ever read and graded. And he goes home and he starts talking to his brother about this teacher. And his brother's like, oh yeah, she was not very fun to try to goof off in. Like her classroom's really hard. But every essay I wrote, I would get an A on. Do you want him? And he looks at his brother and says, well, how would I even use your essays? Like, what, how would that work? And this teacher had been at the school for a while, and she used the same essay questions every year. And then he asks his brother, well, what about her being super hard to, like, convince that it's not your writing? And he laughs and says, dude, trust me. She says that, and everyone lets her believe it, but she could not tell if something was plagiarized to save her life. And I want to make a disclaimer. I'm not saying he should have plagiarized. Plagiarism is wrong, okay? J just write the essay. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That being said, I understand where the guy is coming from. So he takes his brother's essay, and on the first essay of the year, it's the same prompt, so he rewrites it, turns it in, and is insanely nervous. He's expecting any minute now she's going to be reading it and look up and be like, You copied your brother to the brig with you. The school has a brig now. That's how long she's been there. She still has it operational. A brig is the jail on a ship, right? I, I just want to make sure that I'm thinking of the right thing. Anyways, he turns it in. She's reading it. And she says, can you stay after class? And he's insanely nervous, but he stays after. And she says, close the door. And then starts gushing about how it was such great writing. And she's very excited to see what he writes for the rest of the year because it was fantastic. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I spent a bunch of time on it, worked super hard, really loved the reading material. And she says thank you, and he leaves. And he's feeling like the man, bro. Imagine someone telling you, there is literally no way you will be able to do this, and then you do it. And you do it so well that they compliment you for it. Wow, you did that so great. Thank you so much. You'd be laughing too. So he goes home and he tells his brother and his brother's like, listen, just keep turning them in and if she ever catches on, then oh well, but just see how long it lasts. And you would think at some point she would have become aware. At some point she would have gone back and double checked. But no, this guy proceeded to spend the rest of the school year turning in his brother's old essays and getting A's on them every single time. 
Literally the easiest year of his life, man. Could you imagine, like, in English for a year, every time an essay gets assigned, you just go, meh, go to the pile, start going through it, pull one out. It's your brother as you turn it in. The teacher thinks she's the hardest grader on the planet, so nothing would get past her. Meanwhile, you're just racking in the 4G or 4.0 GPA, all because your brother was a good writer. And it's not like this guy didn't know how to write. It was just more of a funny thing because she was so sure that she would grade everything so hard and she remembered everything she had ever graded. Apparently not. And his brother wasn't some insanely long time ago. It's not like his brother was there in the 70s and it's the year 2022. She had taught his brother like three years before. So the uh, iron trap of a memory that never forgets. Apparently three years is the limit on that. Meaning that some dude out there could theoretically be turning in, like, his dad's papers and she would definitely not remember it. Or maybe it's only recently. Maybe she used to have the great memory, but she's getting older. It's like a superhero that just gradually loses their super strength. Either way, I just thought that was a pretty slick own for y'all. But uh, on that note, I think that's gonna do it. If you enjoyed, please press the like button. It's a 40 minute video, guys. All new stories. I feel like I earned the likes, so uh, click the button. And also, comment the word Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle down below. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. You will touch the ooze and Master Splinter will train you to be their butler. Not a fun job. You know how much pizza crust you have to pick up on a daily basis? Beyond that, if you're new, subscribe, turn on those notifications. I would really appreciate it. And of course, you can listen to this on Spotify, link down below, along with a link to the intro song. And if you like the old reaction content that I used to do over on the Scrubby channel, I've been doing a podcast on my third channel, Scrub A, called Ryan's Rants, which is pretty similar. Feel free to check that out, and uh, yeah, on that note, guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy Friday. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. Appreciate all y'all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.